Hello, I'm a Greek geek because I'm 50% Greek and 100% a geek. Now, I am very aware that this movie review is very, very late. The movie's been out for weeks now, but I didn't feel super keen to give my thoughts on it. And I thought, well, um, if I'm going to get this done, I better do it now. So here is my review. Plot of this movie, Old Will Smith versus Young Will Smith. When I saw him, it was like I was seeing a ghost. So, weirdly enough, I actually liked, kind of liked Will Smith's character in this. He's like a super depressed army guy who has PTSD and is just sick of his job of killing people. And he's sick of it because he enjoys it so much. He just wants a normal life. At the start of this movie, when he's, when he's sniping that guy at the start, and he does sp spend a lot of the movie sniping because, hey, he's a sniper, he's an assassin. But the whole time I was thinking this is kind of like a prequel to, to Deadshot or something for Deadshot's character. That was just was running through my mind because of Suicide Squad. The younger version I found less interesting of Will Smith's character, but... And I thought that his voice sounded kind of weird. Like, Will Smith was trying to do a younger voice, or a different voice at least, for the younger version of himself. But it it just sounded weird, didn't sound right. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Benedict Wong, I both I enjoyed both their characters as well, surprisingly. Um, I liked she's a strong character, Like, and I liked as well in her action scenes when she was fighting guys. It wasn't just punching them and then knocking them out. It was that she was using strategy and jujitsu to pin them down and outsmart them. Bendik Wong is mostly the comedic relief and he's just there to say funny stuff and say quips at what other people say. And then he just dies suddenly. <laughs> Quite unceremoniously too. We don't really see him die. It's just like, oh, there's a missile coming. And then everyone jumps out of the car, but Bendik is too slow. And then it just blows up and like, oh, he's dead. And then they move on and don't seem to care at all. It's great. I didn't really care for Clive Owen's character as well. Even he's like trying trying to be a father figure for young Will Smith and because older Will Smith didn't really have a proper good father figure and he thought that would make him better or something. And Clive Owen's doing like a kind of weird accent as well because he's British and we all know he's British and has a very British accent, but he's trying to do like an American accent and... It was okay, but I could see cracks in it from time to time with certain words that he said. It took me out of the movie just a little bit. Tell me something. Why is it so hard for you to kill this man? He knew every move of mine before I made it. This is where I enjoyed the movie the most. I had the most fun when there were fun action scenes and chase scenes. Like, my favourite scene in the movie is when the first time when young Will Smith is chasing after older Will Smith and it starts off as kind of like a sniper standoff and then they're like running over buildings shooting at each other trying to outsmart each other like it gets a bit over the top sometimes like oh what was, was it younger Will Smith or older Will Smith one of them throws a grenade and the other one just shoots it and it bounces back I'm like oh, this is so dumb it's great and it, it gets even more ridiculous than that but not purposely I'll explain when I get to a different segment that I will talk to it will make sense in a little bit I promise you and people actually take damage like someone gets punched in the face they get bruised they start to bleed and it stays like and like unlike other movies it takes me out of it completely you get punched kicked in the face thrown around you're going to get bloodied up and bruised this movie actually did that quite consistently and did it well i found unlike those new like dumb fast and furious movies where like people are getting punched all the time and they're just like fine still perfect makeup too uh, but then in saying that i said i was doing it consistently and then it didn't because Will Smith, by the end of one fight, fight scene with young Will Smith, he can like barely walk. Then one plane ride later, he's fine. He's able to walk and fight again. So consistently not consistent. They really talk up this group of soldiers called Gemini and how good they are. They're the best. They're the elite. And then they're used at the end of the movie and then they're just stormtroopers. Essentially can't hit anything even with the machine at this big huge machine gatling gun whatever you want to call it and it's they're hiding in a store and they're hiding behind just a wooden 
desk or whatever they're hiding behind and it 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 blocks it and it doesn't work it's 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 really dumb and of all the people in the world to come after me why would he send you all righty the special effects <laughs> Uh, they're pretty dumb. I talked about before that things get even worse, like in that chase scene when Will, young Will Smith is chasing older Will Smith on a bike, and then he's trying to run him over with the bike, and that, that whole bit is CGI. As in the bike, the young Will Smith, and I think older Will Smith in a couple of bits where he's moving, it is CGI, and it looks really bad, and they couldn't get a motorcycle stunt person or whatever to, to do that stuff. It really seemed like that would be really, not easy, but doable, but they it's just CGI and it's so bad. Gee, it's so bad. I seem to be saying this a lot in this review. And there's another fight scene in Hungary in the crypts of some place. And they're fighting each other just normally, like hand-to-hand, -hand, martial arts fighting, couple of punches, a couple of spins, kicks, throws, that kind of thing, locks. And they do that in CGI and it's... Ugh, so bad. It's just regular hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Why did that need to be CGI? And they're superhuman in that scene. They seem to be able to damage stuff and punch stuff, and it seems to do way more damage than it should. And it's just... Ugh. And on the 120 frames per second, I didn't notice it, truthfully. I was dreading it a bit because I'm like, oh, I'm going to feel nauseous through the whole movie, or it's not really going to makes sense, and I didn't even really notice it. So, maybe my cinema is just shit. <laughs> and I thought the de-aging on Will Smith was done very, very well. I, th I think I've heard other people say that it's not so great, looks really bad, but I actually thought it looked pretty good. Henry, has this ever happened to you before? Your own government trying to kill you? Nah, that's new. Everything that we've worked for is at stake. So the movie is directed by Ang Lee and he has actually done some really, really great movies. Like for example, he's, he's directed Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which is a phenomenally beautiful movie. It is beautiful to look at and a great story, excellently choreographed. It is great and it really helped bring over kind of Eastern movies into the Western kind of mindset. So that was really good. <laughs> that was fantastic. I think he directed Brokeback Mountain too. I haven't seen it, but I think it's good. But then he's done other not so good movies like Hulk back in 2003 or whatever it was. And it's written by David Benioff, which is half the reason why Game of Thrones season seven and eight sucks so bad. The writing in this isn't that great either. There's some, the, the, it's very simplistic, the plot of the movie and how it's written. And it's just quite a bit boring, truthfully. The movie had me engaged at the start, but then it just, my interest just waned over time. But I'm glad to hear that this movie bombed the box office so people might realize, hey, if we get one of the Game of Thrones writers, our movie is gonna suck. Someone at Star Wars, please stop them before they do anything too damaging over there, please. At the end of the movie, when young Will Smith and old Will Smith are together, they're not, well, not, not, not together. When they're, <laughs> they've joined, they've um, joined forces and they take on the special group of soldiers, Gemini, take them all down. Then there's just this one other soldier that just starts running in and then just starts blasting people and the shotgun has fireworks in it apparently because it just sticks <laughs> that's bad and then they take on this soldier it's beating the crap out of everyone and i'm just like this is not just a regular soldier this is this they're focusing way too much time and this guy is too good just to be just a regular soldier and then it's revealed that it's another will smith clone and i'm just like in the last like five minute five ten minutes of the movie and it's like Okay, cool, I guess. Are there any more of these? Nope. Just just three, and we're just gonna trust Clive Owen to say, oh yeah, there's just there's just these three, there's no more, I swear. <laughs> and then dead. Of all the people in the world to come after me, why would he send you? Alright, so while I quite enjoyed the movie more than I thought, it's not great. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but the movie is not great. And my, as I said before, my interest just waned over time. 
But if you're interested in some dumb action, really bad CGI, um, then this might be the movie for you. And seeing young Will Smith versus old Will Smith, that's the, the main thing they're going for, trying to sell this movie. But if I were to rate it, I'd give it one Will Smith out of three. <laughs> so those were my overdue thoughts on Gemini Man. Thank you for watching me ramble on about a terrible movie for a few minutes. Thank you. I do appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.